In this Blackthorn Pro tutorial, we will create a crafting system using Unity and C Sharp. You'll be able to drag and drop ingredients into slots and the correct combination and order of these ingredients will result in whatever you like, from shields and spears to wooden crates and golden totems. This video is sponsored by DataCamp. DataCamp is an online learning platform that makes acquiring data skills easier and more convenient. With over 350 data science courses designed by top experts, both newbies and pros can find great ways to grow their knowledge. What's really cool is their gamified experience that helps you learn and stay motivated. You're basically trying to gain XP and level up, but become a stronger data scientist. Learning data science will help you venture to the realm of artificial intelligence and machine learning for game dev. For example, this track on machine learning fundamentals with Python would be a great place to start. You can also learn how to use data to estimate level difficulty using this Candy Crush course. How many players struggle with this specific level, for example, and should it be fixed? Invest in yourself, use my link in the description, and check out the first chapter of any course for free. So let's quickly go over what we have in our scene at the moment. So in this scene, we've got a basic canvas that has our crafting menu game objects. Inside of it, we've got four crafting slots, which is just a UI image that we'll be changing depending on what item we placed in the slots. There's also the result slots, which will store the item that we crafted. We went ahead and added an empty c -sharp script called slots on each of our slots, including the result slots. Then we've got a couple resources up here. These are just UI images, and we've gone ahead and added an item c -sharp script to them. Of course, this item script is completely empty. We will be writing it in this tutorial. Next off, we've got another canvas called the cursor canvas. This canvas just has a UI image inside of it called custom cursor, which is deactivated at the moment. So the custom cursor also has a custom cursor c -sharp script attached to it. And again, there's nothing written. We will do all this in the tutorial. The custom cursor will help us with our drag and drop effects. Of course, we want this custom cursor to render on top of our other UI. So we increased the sort order of this custom cursor to one. We also added to it a canvas group component so that we can uncheck interactable and blocks recasts. This way our cursor canvas will not get in the way of our main canvas. If we didn't add this, then whenever we tried clicking on a button, the button would not detect our clicks. Lastly, we have an empty game object called Crafting Manager that just has a C -sharp script, also called Crafting Manager, that will hold all of our crafting logic. Let's start off with our item and slot C -sharp scripts, since they only have a couple of lines each inside of them. So in our item script, which is attached to our resources, we are going to simply create a public string called item name. So this variable will just let us know what each item is. So on my wood resource, I'm going to type wood, and on my stone resource, I'll type stone, for example. Now inside of my slot, I will create a public item variable called item, which will just store what item is inside, and it'll also create a public int variable called index. Now inside of Unity, I can select my first slot and give it an index of zero. The second slot will have an index of one, the third an index of two, and the fourth an index of three. These indexes will help us out later when creating our recipe system. Okay, so we're all done with our slot and item scripts. Now let's open up our crafting manager script. We're going to start off with the dragging and dropping of our items inside of our slots. So I'm going to create a public void function called on mouse down item that will take in as a parameter a item called item. We're making this function public since we will be calling it from an event trigger when we click on an item. Let's also create an item variable called current item. This variable will store the current item that we are dragging and dropping. Now inside of the function, we will first of all check if current item is equal equal to null. So if we aren't yet dragging and dropping any item, then we will set our current item to be equal to the item parameter. Let's also create a public image variable called custom cursor. Then back to our function, we will activate our custom cursor by typing custom cursor .game -objects .set active true. Lastly, we will change the sprite of our cursor to current item .get component image sprites. Okay, so let's save the script and now open up our custom cursor script. In here, we just need to make our custom cursor follow our mouse around. So very simple, inside of the update function, I will set the transform.position to be equal to input.mouseposition. Let's also do the same inside of the awake function. Otherwise, we will see for a split second, right when our cursor gets activated, our cursor is somewhere else before updating to the correct position. Now let's save the script and head over back to Unity. I'm going to select my crafting manager and I will drag and drop my custom cursor inside of the slot. Now let's select our wood resource and I will add to it an event trigger component. Then I will click on this add event button and I will choose pointer down. Now I will drag and drop the crafting manager inside of this slot and then search for the on mouse down item function. Once you clicked on it, just drag and drop the item components inside of the item slots. Now just repeat the same process for your other resources. 
If you press play, you will see that we can now click and drag our resources. Quick pause to let you know that we've created an epic icon pack that you can use completely for free in any of your games. This can be used for cool UI, your RPG inventories, crafting, whatever really. You don't need to credit us, this is simply the first of many little gifts that we're giving to this awesome game creation community. But if you weren't sure what artwork to use for your crafting demo, now you have plenty of options. Let's now place them inside of our slots. So back inside of my crafting manager script, I'll create a public slot array called crafting slots. Now inside of the update function, I will check when we let go of our left click by saying if button up zero. First of all, we will check if we're actually dragging an item around. So if current item is not equal to null. If so, then we will start off by deactivating our custom cursor. Now we're going to want to search for the closest slot to our mouse position. So I'm going to create a slot called nearest slot I will set equal to null as well as a float variable called closest distance that will be set to float.max value. Now I will create a for each loop to go through all of our crafting slots. So for each slot, slot in crafting slots. Inside of it I will calculate the distance between our input.mouse position and our slot.transform.position and I will store it inside of a float variable called distance. Then I will check if distance is less than our closest distance variable. If so, then our closest distance now becomes our distance variable and our nearest slot now becomes our slots that we are looping through at the moment. Okay, now that we have fetched our nearest slot, we will activate our nearest slot by saying set active true. We will also say nearest slot dot get component image sprite to be equal to our current item dot get component image sprite. Of course, we will also set our nearest slot dot item to be equal to our current item. Finally, we will set our current item to be equal to null since we don't want any item that we are dragging and dropping anymore. Alright, so let's save the script and head over back to Unity. In here, I will drag and drop all four of my crafting slots in the inspector. And now if I press play and test it out, you will see that our drag and drop mechanic is working great. Let's now actually complete this tutorial by creating our recipes and crafting system. So back inside of our crafting manager, we're going to create a few variables. First of all, we need a public list of items called item lists. This list will store our four different items that are currently in our crafting slots. Then we need a public string array called recipes. Next off, we will make a public item array called recipe results. And lastly, a public slot variable that will contain our result slots. Let's quickly go back to Unity and fill in these variables. So I will start off by just setting our item list to have a length of four. Then let's create some recipes. So the way our system is going to work is pretty straightforward. If I want to be able to create a wooden crate by combining four woods, I will create a recipe string four times wood. If I want to be able to create a spear with three wood and then one stone, I will create the recipe wood, 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 stone. If you want a space or nothing, then you can simply put the word null. So for example, wood, null, stone, null could be another type of recipe that makes something else entirely. You always need four words in your recipe. Now the recipe results is the list of items that will get crafted when we complete a recipe. So just drag and drop your items in the same order as the recipes. So note that we also added our item script to our wooden crate, our spear, and so on. Okay, let's now jump back into our script. So inside of the update function, when we let go of our item that we dropped inside of our slot, we will set our item list with an index of nearest slot dot index to be equal to our current item. So we are basically filling in our item list to keep track of what slot contains what item inside of it. Then finally, we will call a function called check for completed recipes. Let's now go ahead and create this void check for created recipes. So basically, each time that we drag and drop a new item inside of a slot, we will check if we have completed a recipe. So inside of this function, I will start with a clean slate by deactivating a result slot and setting result slot dot item to be equal to null. Now I'm going to create a string variable called current recipe string, and I will set it equal to an empty string. Then we're going to create a for each loop to loop through the item list. So for each item, item in item list. Now if item is not equal to null, then we will add to our current recipe string our item dot item name. Else, so if the item is equal to null, then we will add the string null to our current recipe string. So this loop is basically forming our recipe string. So now if we have one wood and one stone, then nothing else in the last two slots, then our current recipe string will be equal to wood, stone, null, null. Now that we have this string, we need to check if it is equal to any of our recipes. So this time I'm going to create a for loop, and we will check if recipes i is equal equal to current recipe string, if so, then we have successfully created a recipe. So I will say result slot dot set active true. I will set result slot dot get component image dot sprite to be equal to recipe results i 
.get component image sprite. And finally, we will change our result slot .item to be equal to our recipe results i. All right, crafting should now work. Before testing it out, we will just add the functionality to remove an item in any slot by simply clicking on it. So I'll create a public void function called onClickSlot, which will take in as a parameter a slot variable called slot. Now inside of this function, I will start by setting slot.item to be equal to null since there is now no more item in the slot. We will also update the item list with an index of slot.index to be equal to null. Next off, we will deactivate our slot by typing slot.gameObject.setActive false. And we won't forget to call our check for completed recipes function since our combination will now be different because we removed an item. Okay, let's save the script one last time and jump back into Unity. So all we need to do is select a crafting slot and add an event trigger to it. Then we will choose the click event, drag and drop the crafting manager object, select the onClick event function, and finally drag and drop the slot script, then repeat this process for the three other crafting slots. Some quick pointers, don't forget to drag and drop the result slot inside the inspector, and don't forget to give your resources names inside of the item script. So if in your recipes you're using the word wood, make sure to name your item wood. Note that this is case sensitive. Now you can press play and enjoy your crafting system. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Hit like if you did, it's a huge help for us. We're releasing a new game creation video every single Sunday, so make sure to subscribe and also consider dropping a comment with a tutorial recommendation or request. And we might turn that into a video. Okay, stay tuned, cheers.